Okay guys, so a little bit of an update on the Land Rover. I uh, haven't been doing much with this over the past few weeks because I've been concentrating on the Porsche and it also, yeah, it needs the TIFF inspection, which is the equivalent to an MOT. Uh, the difference is uh, over in Germany, it happens every two years rather than once a year, uh, like in the UK at least. I don't know how it is in, in other countries. But um, yeah, it ran out at the end of last year, so it's uh, been like off the road for a while, but that's no bad thing because as you remember from the last video, I think I mentioned it, uh, one of the newer wheel cylinders from the restoration has already gone. So, which, uh, you know, according to your feedback uh, is not surprising. They're just such shocking quality these days. But anyway, yeah, there's a few things to do. So I've got to do the front brakes, which are all over there. I've got a set of uh, front new front drums there. And I've also got to repair the washer motor because that has never worked well say so it has never worked it used to work but um do you remember when in 2021 when i put this back on the road it literally stopped working just before the mot and i, I just chanced it and uh, they didn't test it so in fact i was in the car while they were doing the mot and i was making everything work and anyway so um it needs to be repaired so i'm gonna take the old one out and see what I can see, see if I can repair it. Okay, so there it is in all its glory. And by the way, I just noticed, and this is the first time it's ever happened here, I've got uh, you know, footprints all over the engine here, which is uh, from uh, a Martin. I don't know if you, you don't get them in the UK, but you know, they're called, uh, yeah, Martins. And uh, they're quite big and they chew cables. And you can see they've been walking over the engine, they probably came in here after I drove it the last time because it's obviously in the middle of winter, freezing cold out here. I think they live on the top of that internal building just over there, which is annoying because I can hear them coughing every now and then, which is very weird. Um, anyway, uh, so I hope they've not done any damage. I can't really see that they've chewed anything, but um, they're a real pain in the ass in Germany because they cost literally every year millions and millions of euros uh, worth of damage to cars um but uh, there we are so yeah that is the culprit the little washer fluid motor and it does work but it just leaks so i'm going to take it out and see if i can actually try and save it Okay, so I've given it a bit of a, a clean up and put a bit of WD-40 in there. And there doesn't seem to be any obvious damage to it. Um, what I did notice is the housing is metal. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pry up the, I'll test it first and see where the leak might be coming from and I might just sort of open up the housing to see what's going on inside. But, you know, first impressions, it seems okay. Okay, so just wiring it up to the battery very crudely, just to make sure that it works. Okay, so the, the motor works absolutely fine. Just gotta see why it's leaking. Okay guys, so just getting it in the light here and, um, well, it's not that great light. Uh, but what I noticed was, you see these little uh, nipples here. Uh, here, which way does it sit? It goes like this. So the water comes in this way and then goes out the bottom. What I realized in one of the, the, the lip of that nipple down here, there was a score in the plastic. So what I think was happening is, is the wash of fluid was being drawn in through the top and just sort of, I don't know, coming out between the pipe because the, the fitting wasn't that good. So I've done two things. I've put a little bit of um, insulation tape around there and I've also cut the end of that 
well, it's not that straight actually, but cut the end of that tube because that's obviously as old as the car is and it had sort of formed, you know, a, a, a sort of like a, a flare in it, which probably wasn't that uh, airtight or watertight. So I'm going to push that back in there. I'm going to do it to the, sa the same thing to the, the fitting in the car, the pipe in the car, and see if that solves it. So this is what I mean. Look, you can see it's just sort of flared out over the years and it's probably become uh, just a bit loose on that fitting. So I'm going to clip that off. Okay, so I've just clipped this off. Let me try and get this light. The, the light in here is very tricky. Um, it's not so bad for the naked eye, but trying to film in here is a nightmare. So I've clipped that end off there. Uh, and, oh no, wait. It's that end off there, which I've just clipped off and I've cleaned the inside of it. And I'm going to put it back together now and put some power to it and see if it actually... Uh, comes out of the jets here. Okay, so I'm just going to test it now and see what happens. Hmm, doesn't seem to be sucking up much water, although there is water coming out there. It's making, it's making a huge amount of noise, but not much water coming through. So, yeah, without taking it apart, what is going on? Any ideas? <coughs> Just no water coming through whatsoever. I mean, there's a little bit coming here, you can see. It's gone on the windscreen a bit, but that's nothing. It should be going out of both jets. Um, in fact, what I can do is I can test to see whether they're blocked or not. Let me do that. Okay guys, so I've come to the conclusion uh, that there's not a huge amount of suck coming from that pump. Uh, the motor works fine, uh, and yeah, I don't know if you can repair them, put new, I don't know, O-rings in there, maybe there's just air getting in the system somewhere. I'll do it for you again so you can see, you can just literally, <coughs> oops, see in that it should be just rushing through. <coughs> The, the water moves within the pipe, but it just doesn't go through. <laughs> Makes a huge amount of noise as well. So I think I'm gonna to have to leave it there um, because it's getting a bit late. It's Sunday afternoon. And yeah, I guess I could take it apart to see what's happening inside. Maybe I'll, it means taking it off again. I've just put it all the way back on, uh, but maybe I will take it off and have a look inside quickly. Okay guys, so. Put the motor out again. I've already pried off. Oh, the light is terrible. That little tab there. And I'm just trying to get to the other one, which isn't that easy, but let's see if I can get to it. It'd be really cool if I could get this working again. Okay, ooh, careful. Right, so. Let me see. Let's get a bit of WD-40 on the, on the case. That's another thing. Never wear a good jacket when you're working in the garage. It's a completely stupid idea because you'll always get oil on it. Right, hmm. You're probably watching this thinking, oh, you're doing it all wrong. It's... Uh, it's connected to something on the inside. Oh, here we go. Just bent that other one up a little bit more. Maybe it needs a bit more. I'm using, obviously, uh, a wood screw, which I think everybody would use in this instance. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think I probably shouldn't be doing that because I can feel some... Oh, no, there we go. Oh yeah, oh wow, look, that's <laughs> phenomenal piece of engineering here, look at this. Looks like some kind of a, 
a miniature satellite. <laughs> it's phenomenal. And that's clearly just the, the uh, motor magnets in there. Um, hmm. So that doesn't really help me much because all I can see there is the brushes of the motor. I mean, I can give that a bit of a clean out, but not going to help me much, I don't think, because we know that the motor is working. So clearly there's something wrong on the inside of the of the pump itself, because the pump ain't pumping, which is a shame. But anyway, interesting to see the insides of a washer motor. Goodness me, look at the, it's just, for me, it just seems so complex. But, um, but anyway, uh, so I think what I'd ha probably have to do is I'd have to take out, what's the make on this? I'd have to take out these, um, these rivets here and have a look on the inside. Okay, so what's happening is when I, oh, I've got the taste of nastiness in my mouth now because I've just been blowing down here. Um, but what happens is when I connect this pipe up and blow through it and put my finger on the, on the end here, what happens is uh, the air comes out of this little hole, which is where the, uh, the motor spindle goes into. So I'm wondering if there is some kind of an air leak in there or in this case, water leak. So I think the only way I can find out is to carefully take it apart. And I guess it's drilling out these, these studs here. Okay, so just got that very lightly in the, in the clamp there, in the vise. So I'm just gonna choose, hmm, what was that? That was three mil, what should we do, four mil? Yeah, I think four mil will do it. Just take out the, take off the heads then have a look inside because basically I've got, I've got nothing to lose doing this. Now I've got to find something thin enough to be able to poke through there or hammer through. Maybe this. Yes. Sorry, hammer. Little taparoo here. Something with this one. Has that come out already? Yep, must have done. Mm, take it out of there. Put it on here. Let's have a look. I wonder if you can actually buy those studs. Just falling out there. Be very handy if I could get some. I'm not sure if you can actually see much of this action, hmm. but just bear with me. Oh, that one's not quite. Hmm. Hang on. That one's through. Okay. Let's come back to this. Yeah, one of the, oh, there you go. One of these days, ping, I might set myself up probably here so you can actually see what I'm filming. But then again, I might not. Uh, God knows where that, where did that one go then? I've only got three of them. Anyway, so you can see what these little things look like. Little studs get flattened over right so now this is the exciting part oh, oh, oh. Oh. Look, at, look at that there's two little te yeah, teeth in there which presume <laughs> go round to uh, create enough movement for in the water to suck it through wait let's see oh, no that's clearly not going to work because don't be stupid. Now then, so I'll take those out and have a look what's underneath. So, 
So, just looking in there, I'm wondering what the problem is, to be honest. Where does the, it's right in the middle. So, hmm. some reason, yeah, the water or the, the pressure is escaping out of this hole in the middle here. Does anybody know why? Somewhere in there, there is a, a seal which isn't working. More investigation is required. I'd really like to try and save it. Okay guys, just to give you a catch up in terms of what I'm doing. So I'm pretty sure that the issue here is, is this O-ring uh, has seen better days. This is maybe slightly deformed over the years and that there's not enough sealant here, but also through this hole here, uh, which is where the uh, motor goes through. So what I've done is I've found some screws which fit perfectly into those holes. Um, and I'm going to run a very thin bead of sealant around that uh, O-ring because I haven't got another one. And I'm also going to put some grease in the hole with that motor spindle so that hopefully uh, that will block that slightly and we'll get better suction. So here goes. Okay guys, so that is the pump sealed and reassembled and I'm now going to fit it into the car and see if it works. Okay guys, so a bit of an unusual ending to this video because when I was filming the work I was doing yesterday on the car, uh, the battery ran out so I couldn't finish it. But essentially, I think I got up to where I was reinstalling the the motor I can't remember um, without checking back but anyway um, <laughs> it's a bit of a, uh, a a funny turn up for the books really so in my mind it was the motor that was at fault and you can probably see where this is going so essentially what I did was I started with the most complicated job uh, of the entire system so I took the motor apart I lubricated it and checked it and tested it and thinking where's the fault you know why is it not working because there's nothing visibly really wrong with it so anyway I put it all back together and then it still wasn't working and I was thinking what's going on and then I had the bright idea to check the lines the feed lines to the the squirters on the windscreen uh, and I used actually some air from the compressor and there was nothing it took something like I don't know what it's set to but six or seven bar which is vast, but there was no air coming out of the squirters. So, um, yeah, I should really have checked the, the pipes before uh, taking the motor apart. So it's a bit of a daft move on my part there. But we did get to see the internal workings of that uh, pump, which I think is the main thing, really. I now know how that uh, water pump works, and so do you. But there were two things, and let me bring you in here because this is bloody, it's a bit of a joke, really. So I was following the lines up, and as you know, they go from the, the bottle into the motor, down out of the motor, and then up under the wing. And I was checking, <laughs> I was checking here, and I realised what I'd done here when I, you can actually still see it, look. There it is in all its glory, that clamped part of that hose. Basically what I'd done is I'd put, um, this cable loom inside this cable holder here and had thought I got them all into that loop. You can see a loop there, but this had slipped down as I was tightening it up. And since I've, since I've finished this car, this has always not been working. So the only issue that has been with it was this clamp in the, um, in the pipe, which is uh, quite frustrating because uh, it's a really simple fix. However, when I saw that, I sort of massaged that um, that pipe back into shape and the water does actually pass through it now. But they're still blocked. The, um, the squirters are still blocked. Um, so eventually, after a lot of toing and froing, I was sort of you know, trying to clean this up with a needle both sides here and here. And eventually I got one of them working. So this one works now perfectly. It actually should be down there now. But this one works perfectly and squirts comically here and then dribbles down onto the windscreen. Um, this is all covered in water yesterday, all down here on the floor. But the one on the other side isn't working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate that's working to you, uh, cause I've got, well, I just dropped it, a bit of cable down here. And then I will obviously have to take the pipes, uh, take the dashboard off and get the, get the pipes out and clean them thoroughly, um, just to make sure that's working. Cause I need that to get the MOT when I take it in. So, 
I'll show you it working. Okay, so I've got my cable wired up there. And you can see how well that's working now. It was just absolutely blocked before. And if you have a look on the, hang on, on the other side, just bring you around here. Yeah, this one isn't working at all, unfortunately, so. Yeah, so there you can see it's sort of dribbling out, uh, which is, I don't know, maybe there's another, well, there's clearly a blockage in it somewhere, but um, on the other side, it's working beautifully. So I'm really, I'm sort of pleased with that. Feel a little bit foolish, obviously, as you can imagine because um, taking that pump apart wasn't really necessary, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.